Here we're uh, looking at a Ford Ranger, a 2000 Ford Ranger, 4 liter, 4x4, with a broken shift tube. Um, I'm going to make a video of how to change it because I couldn't find one on the internet. Uh, first thing to do is disconnect the power, the battery. The part where you're going to be working is underneath the dash and we're going to put the camera in place. A couple things I've already done here. This is the first thing you do is take off the um, hood release. There's two small two screws that are up behind there and then there's a bumper thing that uh, may fall out so drop that down the second thing you do is pop off well there's two there's two screws that hold hold this on plus what I call the body um, body <laughs> holding um, clips that sometimes uh, break when you take them off so but they didn't on this so that comes off be sure and uh, save the parts. Then this next thing is this metal um, part of the underneath the dash, and that'll come off. There's there's four screws. Um, one, two, three, and four. I've already taken out three. So take that off. The next thing will be to disconnect the speedometer, um, or not the speedometer, the um, gear shift indicator. I'm going to try to get underneath here to show where it is. I hope it's uh, it's right here and it connects up to this. So take this off this little hook and um, get it out of the way and then uh, we'll carry on from there in a moment. Next is to take off the covers around the steering column. There's three Phillips screws, one there and two on the other side and uh, you may have to tilt the wheel down if you use a long screwdriver because it otherwise it runs into the seat. Well, you have to unscrew these, of course. Of course you do. Unscrew the, the wheel tilt lever and that comes out. And then okay, the top part of the um, steering column cover comes out with uh, some difficulty. You have to move it or screw the um, tilt mechanism lever back in and um, try it to push it, push the wheel down and then wiggle it around. So there's that, and the boot boot stays here for now. Be careful you don't break any of these tabs off, otherwise you'll be in more trouble than you started off with. And Well, so the next problem to overcome is uh, the thing that's holding the boot on, which is a clip that is like uh, basically a one-way U.S. automotive, we don't care if they get it out or not clip in one piece. So what I'm going to do is clip that it's hold it's also holding this wire which I don't know the purpose of right now. So I'm going to clip the rubber nipple off this so I can get it apart because it would only take a magician to um, undo it. So I clip this off here. This is actually the overdrive off and on that goes out to the uh, there. I noticed my boots torn too. So once I uh, t 
take this pin out, I can uh, replace the boot, get a new one, which means another weight from the uh, auto supply. Okay, next is the uh, horseshoe thing, which is 13 millimeter. It has um, bolts on the bolts over bolts. You can see, oh, don't want to hit that anything. And then we have to take off. Well, the next operation is uh, dropping the, uh, steer the steering column down. And to do that, you have to undo four bolts. One here, one back there, one back there, and the really difficult one, which is behind here. Um, they're also, they use reverse um, Torx uh, sockets which uh, look like this um, for the bolt itself, well for the the stud, it has a stud and sometimes the stud comes out and you have to hold the stud with the reverse torque socket and then um, unscrew the bolt with like a, thir a 13 millimeter wrench. So um, here, I don't know if this is going to work very well. Well, all, I've taken all four three out and one loose, so there. So now, this is dropped down and we can see the um, shift tube right there, which we will proceed to fix, replace. And that's it for now. There's the shift tube right there. Alright, the next thing we want to do is um, loosen, take out the, f the four screws, one, two, three, whoop, four, sorry, we're moving. And um, if you left, put the pin back, uh, you might take it out and put it in a safe place where it won't get lost. And the, the straps that hold down are the um, shift tube. There's one, two. Four, and one, and one more. I um, this was kind of dirty, so I took my shop vac and a paintbrush and kind of cleaned it out. Uh, anyway, one more. It's a 12-year-old car, so you have to expect that, and an off-road at that. All right, and there we are with that for now. This this is now somewhat loose, but it has the um, the this strap thing that goes over it. Whether I need to take that out or not, I don't. I don't. So moving right along here, there's um, the bolt that's um, down here that connects to um, one of the tabs on the shifter and or, and the bolt that's there that connected to the other tab. Uh, this one was broken up, the, the, that part was broken which is why I'm replacing it. And um, now this is loose. Da -da -da -da. So now it's time to reinstall the, the, new, the new one. Um, this won't come out very far because of this. This is the line to the uh, transmission, and it's pretty much there. I suppose there's some way to disconnect it from there, but I didn't do that. All right, after you take the old one out, you have to take a few parts off it um, to put in the new one, which would include this little um, clip with a rubber something or another there. This was here, now it's going to be here. And then um, this pin has to be driven out and take out this, which was here. And then the spring goes over the end of it. Um, see, there's the broken old one. And then uh, grease, grease the inside. Um, 
I don't think you need to grease grease the inside part of this, in, but I don't know, I think you have to grease the outside. I'll just have to wipe it off. So now we're going to put things back. Alright, we're in the uh, put it back together mode, which involved um, on this shift, the thing that goes to the shifter, or to the transmission, this bolt and then the uh, the other bolt. Now I didn't have any Loctite so I put some construction adhesive um, in the threads because uh, both of these bolts had uh, just come come out you know seemingly for no reason and so we're and then the next thing we're going to do is put this little part on here and then put on the the straps that hold the actual um, shift tube down. Um, we'll come back and... The one good thing about this part of the assembly is that um, all these bolts are the same length and the same um, Torx size T30. So that, the, including the bell crank, one, two, this assembly, three more, and four on here. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, putting in the wrong size bolt. So we got the, um, the four bolts and the horseshoe, or whatever you want to call it, back on. The ones in the back, you actually don't have to remove the bolts because it has a, a V-shaped, um, thing, not a hole. So if you just loosen the bolts, which is way easier, and take these out, then it'll slide at the hole. This will slide this way and then drop down. Well, it made it out of the garage and shifted into all gears and back in for now, so I'm calling it good. I hope this is a help to somebody